And uh, we mentioned Tuesday, uh, Saturday night. You got a, a what time is that game? Eight, uh, I think eight. Eight o'clock in eight. Indianapolis. Yep. And uh, last time I was concerned about uh, about uh, Wisconsin. I don't think I need to be this time. Do you? No, you were wrong to be concerned <laughs> last time. I think it's a one in ten. Wisconsin's one in ten against Ohio State in the last eleven. Uh, Wisconsin does what they do. It works against most teams. It never works against Ohio State. So um, I have. I really wanted Minnesota to beat Wisconsin just so this game would be a little oh, different. Minnesota was a phony team. Gosh, you're really bringing it tonight, Les. Little Going bit. after people. Uh, PJ Fleck. I, I ate a the, lot. I ate a lot on Thanksgiving. They were rowing the boat all the way to Indy. <laughs> uh, so I've seen this game before. I saw it in 2014 when it was 59. What, what ocean is Indianapolis on? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't know. There's probably a river there on the banks of the old yeah, downtown. Yeah. So I mean, I've, we've seen Ohio State versus Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship game. Being indoors in Indianapolis only exacerbates Ohio State's athletic edge. I just, I have, I could not be less interested. And by the way, if Ohio State loses, they're probably going to the playoff anyway. Right. As a fourth seed, and they'll, they'll win it from the four. They can win from any spot. Who do you want to really see? I think they'll only beat Utah by 30, 36. So the most interesting path would be if LSU loses to Georgia in the SEC championship, then I think LSU gets in as the four. Then I think it would be number one Ohio State versus number four LSU in the semifinals. And then it would be either Georgia or Clemson for Ohio State in the finals if they win. That's the most interesting path. I don't think it's impossible They're for Georgia to beat LSU. Are they not all interesting? At that point? Utah is slightly less interesting. Yeah. I mean, one versus four Ohio State, Utah, or Baylor, or Oklahoma. It could be Oklahoma. That would be kind of interesting. But Baylor, LSU are the teams I'm very right, curious. Let's take a look the last time these two teams met, Ohio Baylor. State and uh, Wisconsin, back on October 26th. 38-7 to was the score. What, what is it? Any idea what the point spread is for this game? Uh, like 16 and a half. I think it started at 18 and moved down to 16 and a half for some reason. I take the Buckeyes. 431 yards to 191 passing yardage. One, only 167 for the Buckeyes. 108 for uh, Wisconsin. And uh, penalties 30, 30 yards uh, for Wisconsin. 15. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Only 15 yards in penalties, and uh, no turnovers for Ohio State. Uh, let's take a look at what uh, some of these guys did for Wisconsin. Jack Cohn is the quarterback, 196 uh, uh, completions and 271 attempts, just uh, over 2,300 yards, 17 touchdowns and only four interceptions. That's pretty good. Jonathan Taylor, a real good uh, running back. There you go, 279 carries, 1761 yards. That's uh, in the upper ranges. 6.3 uh, yards per carry and 20 touchdowns on the season for Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Quintez uh, Cephas, he uh, has 43, 44 receptions there, or 45 receptions rather, 720 yards, 16 yards uh, on, a, on each reception, and uh, but just six touchdowns on the season. Anybody else you would put in the who to watch for? What? I fell asleep <laughs> during Wisconsin stats. <laughs> you put Jack Cohn on the screen and my eyes glazed over. I thought it was C-O-H-E-N. What do I know? Listen, the one thing I think is interesting is is Jonathan Taylor is regarded as the either the best or second best tailback in the country. Right. Uh, he's, he's a compiler. He gets the ball a lot. I think J.K. Dobbins, we were talking about Heisman stuff, the only chance for J.K. Dobbins to actually get to New York as a Heisman finalist is if he has a giant game and Jonathan Taylor doesn't, and people now view J.K. Dobbins as the best tailback in the country, which I think he already is. I think that could happen when they played the first time, Dobbins outgained him like 170 to 45 or something. Think about what you said without saying it, if you mm. could do that. You, Dobbins, most people consider him the best running back. Fields is the number one or two quarterback in the nation. Number two, yep. Uh, you've got uh, a pretty Chase good Young. Chase Young, who is the best, what, pass rusher? Best, best defensive best player. Best defensive player of the year. All on one field, on one, one team. It's pretty good. It is very possible, depending how this goes this weekend, it's possible that the four best Heisman Trophy candidates are three Ohio State Buckeyes and a guy who used to be an <laughs> Ohio State Buckeye. What a story for people around the nation, that story that he was the quarter, was the backup quarterback mm -hmm. and then wasn't going to be the real quarterback, so he moves and they could be meeting in the championship game. Oh. Kind of unbelievable. And, and, I, and I, I don't think I'm going to get to talk to Joe about it. When Joe Burrow, we're talking about Joe Burrow, the LSU quarterback, um, when he was a backup at Ohio State, all I ever talked to him about with Matt was Matthew Della Vadova. I had multiple conversations. He Why? loves... 
Matthew Della Vadova. He wears Delhi jerseys. I asked him if he was like rooting for Australia in the Olympics. Was he going to be a Bucks fan when Delhi went there? He loved Delhi, and so I like sort of thought of Joe Burrow as Delhi in my head, and now oh. he's LeBron. Now Joe Burrow's going <laughs> to Joe Burrow's going to win the Heisman. Delhi. Yeah, he is. Joe Burrow's going to win the Heisman, no doubt about it. He used to be like a like a scrappy little backup point guard. Let's uh, take a look at our how come quickie for the night, if we can do that. Or am I off? There you go. How come if you go the whole nine yards, you probably have to punt on fourth down? Is that dirty? No. Okay. Not supposed to be. It is in my head. Um, I don't. I can't answer that, Les. You've stumped me again. That's the object here. <laughs> Browns are a long shot to make the playoffs. <laughs> we were that. Oh no! I wrote them up. They're done. Of course. I mean, done. if they had won. They were right, yeah. right in it. They'd be tied with the Steelers at six and six, one game back of the second wild card if they had won. Let's take.